Hello folks, here we go in another little video. In this video, I sort of want to tackle a little bug that we have in our code so far. It's always good to get rid of bugs as we go, so later we don't have to tackle all kinds of bugs. This little bug is the following. If I choose Quick Add, you'll notice I can press the Add button right away. And by doing that, I get a blank to do title and it doesn't look very nice so it would make sense to put a minimum on the number of characters that have to be typed in so we're gonna make the add button disabled or enabled depending on the number of characters that are in this text box so once we hit the limit the add button will enable if the limit isn't hit yet, it'll stay disabled. So that's what we're going to do in this little video. Again, that makes our code a little bit more robust and makes it better for the user. So, step number one, I'm going to go to the top of the code, and I always like to use constants instead of just, uh, just random numbers. So I'm going to make a constant called min title length gth so i'm gonna make the minimum title length of three now the way we do this in swift and in many other languages is by what we call event handling Okay, so what I have to do is I have to make a method that gets called every time somebody types into that text box. So every time a character goes in the text box, I'm going to call a method that says, Are you three yet? Are you three yet? Are you three yet? And if you are three, I'm going to enable the button. If you're not three, I'm going to disable it. So I need a little method that's going to constantly enable and disable the, um, the add button. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write up that function. First, I'll make an extension, because you know I love extensions. And these will be all of my event, whoops, my event handlers. This event handler will be a func. I'm going to do this rather quickly, and we're going to go into more detail in future videos. The name of the event, uh, sorry, the name of the method could be anything I want, but I'm going to name it so it makes sense. Text field did change. So if the text field changed, and let me put in the parameters. Again, we're going to discuss these in detail. So, uh, this will be a UI text field. So, whoops, let's put this out here. This is going to be the method that will get called every time somebody types something in that text field. So, what do I want to do in here? Well, first, I want to figure out the length of the text so far. So I'm going to say the length of the text field dot the text dot the characters dot the count. Oh my god, how are we ever going to learn that? Well, don't worry, we will. And notice there was a, a, a question mark. I changed it to an exclamation mark. No worries about that yet. We're going to be working on that on a very soon video. So what this does is it gives me the length of the text field as it stands right now. The next thing I have to do is... I need to get access to our add action button. The add action button is part of the quick add alert. The quick add alert is a UI alert controller. Down here, it seems like I have no access to the variables up here. But in reality, and if you think about it, 
there's always some controller in charge. No matter what's on the screen, there's got to be something in charge. So what we want to do is we want to get the controller that's currently in charge. We know that since the user is typing in a title, then this UI alert controller must be in charge. So it's a very simple matter of saying, let the controller equal the present view controller. And that's the view controller that's currently on the screen. I'm going to do something called typecast that to the type of view controller that I know it is. So, I now have a copy of this quick alert view controller. So, I have access to anything within that controller. Notice the add action is in that controller. So what I want to do now is say the controller dot actions dot last. Why last? Well, actions happens to be an array. Notice we have two actions. We have a cancel action and an add action. They're stored in an array, and I want the last one that happens to be the add. Notice again, we have a question mark here. We won't worry about that. I want to set this is enabled. So when should this be enabled? It should be enabled when the length of the text is greater than or equal to the minimum text. Notice I don't need an if because I this is a boolean and I'm assigning it a boolean. So if this is true, it means we have enough characters, so this is enabled. If this is false, it means we don't have enough characters and this is disabled. Now, what have we not done yet? Does this method get called yet? No. We want to call this method every time something changes in our text field. Remember, we added a text field to the alert. So every time there's a character, we have to run this code and check and check and check and check. So how are we going to run this code every time something changes in the text field? Well, let's try and see what we can do. First, we're going to start with the alert. The alert, just like it has an array of actions, it also has an array of text fields. Now, how many text fields do we have? We only have one, so we can just take the first one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a add a target. Adding a target means we're going to ask it to constantly check things. Our target is going to be self, and again, we'll discuss these things. Now, what do we want to do when an event happens to our first text field? Well, we're going to select. So, we're going to say selector. And we're going to select the method that we just created, text and change. The last step is we have to say for which events are we interested in. And the event we're interested in is called editing changed. So let's read this line one more time to make sure it makes sense. I'm adding a target to the first text field, which is the only text field. I'm saying if an event happens to self, in other words, if it happens to the first text field, call this method and do it anytime the event is edit changed. 
So that's going to call this method. And if this is true, then the add button will be enabled and it'll be false otherwise. What's one thing we should remember to do? When the alert starts, what should be the status of the add button? When the alert starts, the add action should start out life as being disabled. And then it'll get enabled depending on what's happening. So let's give this a shot. So we got a successful build, that's always fun. And here we go, let's click quick add. Look, the add button is disabled. If I type one character, it's still disabled. Two characters, still disabled. Three characters, there you go, we can now click the add button. Let's do it one more time. What happens if I put BBP and then I decide to go backwards? It still works because remember, the event handler gets triggered for every single click. So it doesn't matter if I'm adding text or removing text or whatever. There's still some bugs here that need to be worked out. For example, I could put space, 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 and then click add. And that doesn't look very good, but we'll tackle those later on. So that was a video on event handlers and enable, enabling and disabling a button. See you soon, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.